formerly on Woodworking with Wes, we have done some videos with a process of refinishing golden oak called ceruzing. We did a great job and we've had a lot of really good response, but we've had a lot of comments about the products that we used in our process. They were hard to come by. And so I have done some serious investigation trying to come up with products that would be easily uh, obtainable and products that you wouldn't necessarily have to have a spray booth for because we used a commercial spray product to do our original demonstration of Ceruse. Now basically Ceruse, for those who are not familiar with it, Ceruse is a process of enhancing the grain of your golden oak, your old oak finish, uh, putting on a base color, glazing over it, and putting a top coat. We're going to go ahead and demonstrate that process clear through for those who have not seen it before and just refresh the memories of those who have, but using the new product that we have found and just giving you an idea of what your end result would be with these new products. And hopefully you'll find that they're just as good as our original process. And so let's get started. The first thing we do, we wire brush our old golden oak finish. Okay, we've completed our wire brushing on our golden oak. Now you notice that I did not strip my, door, my drawer face. All I did was wire brush. The wire brush took off a lot of the old finish, but what it did was dig out the softer part of the grain. And like I say, ceruzing enhances the grain. It works really well on coarse grade woods like oak and ash. This is a, a piece of red oak, golden oak. And so what it does is it digs out the softer part of the grain and it creates a situation where the glaze hangs in and highlights the grain. And you'll see how we do that. But now we've done our wire brushing, our next step is to paint a base coat. This is where we come into the product difference. The product that we used originally was a spray industrial coat and now what I did is I went to Benjamin Moore and I went searching for products that you could get readily available. They gave me paint to put on as our base coat. Um, Fresh Start Multipurpose Latex Paint. I had to read it to remind myself, but this is what we did, and we have it tinted to kind of a off green color that we want to use for our base coat. Then the glaze that they gave us is a clear glaze. It actually looks white, but it's called clear glaze, and you tint it by adding a little more latex paint. They gave me a a little bit of white paint because we're going to tint our glaze white to go on our green. So the first thing we've got to do is paint our drawer face with our green base coat. Now we got a good nylon bristle brush to paint it with and I'll have you just watch as I paint and go through the paint on this. Let's open up the can of our paint. I got me a little stir stick here and we'll stir up our paint. It's really a nice quality paint. Benjamin Moore makes a good quality paint. The salesperson at Benjamin Moore was very helpful in helping me find these products and helping me determine what I could do to use and end up with the um, process that completed. I got a good nylon bristle brush. Now I tried a uh, test sample. I used the brush that they gave me, but I also used just a, a cheap, what they call a chip brush, just a wooden handle bristle brush. It didn't do as well. And so the nylon brush really makes a difference. I'm gonna put on my glasses. We're gonna paint the base coat on this. It should only take one coat. We're going to brush it good, make sure that we get our paint down into the grain that we wire brushed, and make sure that we don't put so much paint on that we fill the grain that we just spent our time uh, hollowing out. 
So just watch as we paint and we'll go ahead and paint this door with our base coat. Now, if I were doing this for a kitchen, I would paint my backside of my door first and I would just paint it with the base coat and that would be all I would do. I wouldn't give it a ceruse on the back, or not ceruse, but a glaze on the back side of the door. I would just um, do a base coat on the back side of the door or the drawer face and I only glaze the front side. But that way your door is painted front and back. But your glazing highlight is only on the front. Like I say, we'll just go ahead now and uh, you can just watch me paint the rest of the way through on this. I just want to make sure that I got it covered good. But this is a great paint. It covers good with one coat. And I'm making sure that I don't get too much on so that I don't fill the grain that I just spent all that time wire brushing out. I always paint my edges first. I don't know if that's the correct way to do it, but that's the way I do it so that I can get my edges all done correctly. In fact, I better turn this up so I can see my edge. Make sure I yeah, I didn't get myself all taken care of there quite as good as I thought I was. It's amazing what you can do when you can see it. Okay, let's do that. I'll paint my other edge here. This one will go easier because I can see what I'm doing. I can tell my wire brushing really did a good job. Um, I can tell by the base coat that I'm putting on here that I can see the grain, the grooves in the grain. Um, oak and ash, like I say, coarse grained woods like this. The grain um, has a what they what I call a hard and a soft portion. And so by wire brushing, you're removing the softer portion and leaving the harder portion of the grain um, highlighted so that when you put the glaze on it, it really um, highlights that original grain look of your oak. And yet you can tell we have totally changed the look of a golden oak door. There's no golden oak left here at all. And we'll make sure we get good coverage, we'll let it dry, and then we'll come back. We have allowed our base color to dry now. It looks really good and, and it really has highlighted the green. If you look real close you can see that, that our base coat has really done well and our wire brushing really stands out. We determined in the process of doing our test samples that this particular base coat needs a sealer coat. Now we're going to be using polyacrylic as our top coat, but we're also going to use it as a sealer coat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our polyacrylic. We're going to stir it real good according to the instructions. And then we're going to give a thin coat of polyacrylic over the top of our paint before we glaze. That way, our glaze only sits on top of the paint and doesn't destroy the paint that we've already spent our time doing. And that's kind of what we had found out in our test, is that we found out that as we put our glaze on, that it uh, interacted with the base coat and kind of destroyed that contrast that we were after. So by putting on a sealer coat, this polyacrylic sealer coat, we're going to stop that interaction between. And we'll put this on and let it dry and then we'll glaze. Now, polyacrylic is a water base. So our paint is water base. Our sealer coat is a water base. Our glaze is water base. And we'll use this for our top coat and it'll be water base. And it all puts on with just a paintbrush. And so this is something that you could do in your home and not have to worry about having 
a spray booth. And I'm going to paint here on the back side where I can see, and then we'll turn it around. And uh, we're just going to brush on a very thin coat. We don't want to have this real thick. This is going to be a very thin coat. It's just a sealer coat. So we're really going to pay attention that this is not a heavy coat at all. Okay, let's turn it around like that. And you can see that we've just put on a, well, I guess you can't see because it's clear. Uh, I can see, <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, it's just a very, very thin coat of this sealer coat that we're putting on. And we are basically painting the same way that we painted our base coat. Go around, do the edges first. And then do the face of our door, drawer face, excuse me. All right, this didn't take us more than just a minute. We've done it all. We've made sure we got all our drips off the edges because I had a couple. We've given a nice smooth coat. We're gonna wait for it to dry and come back. Okay, let's bring us up to date where we are. We've done our paint, our base coat paint. We'll set that out of the way. We've used our polycrylic for our sealer coat. It's now dry, we're ready to go. And we're ready to put our glaze. Now, the glaze that we purchased from Benjamin Moore is called clear glaze. And you mix it with a latex paint to give you the color. Um, let's open it up. And let's mix us some glaze. We're going to make white glaze, so we got us a little can of white latex paint to use as our color. We'll mix our... Now it's clear glaze, it looks white, but it's actually clear. If you painted it on, it would be clear. And so we mix that up a little bit. And we're going to pour us a little bit of glaze in our... Can there. We'll set that off to the side. This white latex paint is what we use for our color. Now according to what Benjamin Moore instructed me was you mix this uh, latex paint with your glaze based upon how much color you want. And we're going to mix it about half and half. to give us the color that we want. We just want white glaze, so I bought white latex paint. That's not a pr precise measurement. We don't need to be precise about this because we're just after a white glaze. So we're just going to Again, the glaze and the paint are water-based, so when you get all done, this just cleans up with soap and water. We're going to be applying our glaze with just a chip brush, and we're going to start on the edge like we do when we do our paint. And we're going to do one little section at a time, and we're just wiping it off with a paper towel. We leave a glaze line like that. And I'm going to turn it like this so you can see the edge that I'm doing a little better. And we're going to do this long edge. And like I say, I like to start on the edges and work my way around. And then do the face of my drawer face or my door the very last. We want to make sure that we get our glaze down into the grooves of our wire brushing, because that's what we're trying to highlight. Again, we take our paper towel, wipe our glaze off like that, and you can begin to see the lines of the grain that we wire brushed.
can really start to see now how that glaze highlights the grain of the wood by laying into the grain that we wire brushed. All right, let's finish off our door by doing the other half. And again, we are brushing our glaze down into the grooves that we highlighted with our wire brush so that we make sure that that's where our glaze will lay to make sure that that grain is exposed. And you'll need several paper towels. You can see that I'm using them and then wiping up as I go along. We just have created a beautiful field of color with our white glaze and our green paint. Okay, that color pops out. We got one more step that we're going to make. We're going to put a top coat over the top of that and we're going to wait for the glaze to dry a little bit and see if we can just polish up some of this glaze to make sure that our green pops through and our grain stands out. All right, come back then. We've allowed our glaze to dry the recommended time. It was about two hours. We've let it dry. We've tested it. It's good and so, uh, dry. And it has created a nice smooth surface ready for our top coat. Again, we're going to go back and we're going to paint uh, polyacrylic as our top coat. So. Let's go ahead and again we'll stir up our polyacrylic like we did before, get it all ready to go. The one nice thing about this whole procedure is everything is paint brushable, or if that's the word, can be applied with a paintbrush, and water soluble or water based so that an easy cleanup. Um, we've been able to just clean up all of our brushes with soap and water and it just makes it so nice to be able to provide this alternative to the ceruzing process that we've demonstrated in the past with our spray uh, ML Campbell products. Now ML Campbell is still a great product but as we have found out and as you have told us, it is not available for most of you. It's a commercial product and it just isn't readily available. So this gives you the same look and you can see we've ended up with a great look on our, on our Ceruse door here, our golden oak with this green and white glaze. And it has just turned out to be a really great alternative to what we've been trying to show. This polyacrylic is non-yellowing, so the color that you in, let me turn around here so I can get a better look at what I'm doing. There we go. It's non-yellowing, so the color that you put on your door, and remember that your paint base color and glaze are your choice. There are many different colors of base colors that you can use, many different colors of glaze that you can use, and you can get those all tinted to your desires. And then, like I say, the, ba the glaze is a clear base glaze, and you just get the latex paint that you add to it to get the color of glaze that you want. So color choice is all up to you. It isn't a matter of uh, this is only a certain thing that is available. Anything is available when you have your own choice. This polyacrylic is an easy to spread on product. We'll 
take the nice long brush strokes at the very end to smooth it out. Oh, we got a little too much over there, but okay, we're good. One last swipe. There we are. Okay, we hope that you've enjoyed our new Ceruzi method to give you that really unique golden oak makeover. Now, in the process of uh, investigating different alternatives, we came up with another one. This is the first one we wanted to show you. We're going to be making another video for another alternative, and it's going to be coming up very shortly too. Stay tuned to that. And we're going to link these two videos back and forth so that you can compare them and see which one that you would prefer to use. And we're going to see you then on Woodworking with Wes.